Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motors Studio, here's Steve Jones. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Great to be with you on this Thursday. What is it going to be? What, six Thursdays from now? We'll be doing the talk show? How about that? Finally getting down to that time. Lift for Life is coming up this weekend. 11 to 1 on uh, Saturday. It will be inside Haluba Hall, by the way. I think people have been used to now going to the lacrosse field. They're redoing the, the lacrosse field. And because they're redoing the lacrosse field, they're going inside to um, they're going inside to Haluba Hall on Saturday. So hopefully you can be there, be a part of it, you know, get all the uh, autographs you want, enjoy it. Uh, it'll be uh, Yeah, I think uh, that's always a fun time for people. They get a chance to see the players. But part of it, too, is that in football, in football, what makes it uh, like an event like this interesting is uh, you get to see them without their helmets on. So it makes it brings it makes it more of a personal experience. You get a chance to talk to them. So there's a lot of good things going on with Left for Life. Plus, the charity is great. I mean, you're you're trying to raise money for uh, diseases, uh, rare diseases, and in this case, for Pence for the Penn State players, it's been kidney cancer research, a rare disease, and that has been something that's. The difference that they've made has been really, really remarkable. Penn State student athletes, spring semester. Talk about academic performance. You put all the student athletes together in the spring. They had a great point average of 3.14. The previous mark had been 3.12. 66 Nittany Lions student-athletes earned at least a 3.0 grade point average. Um, Excuse me, my apology. 66%, two-thirds, earned at least a 3.0 average. At least two-thirds of them, 66%, earned a 3.0 grade point average. Back in 2015, 63% had done it. Penn State teams delivered a combined GPA of 3.0 or higher during the spring semester. 24 of them did that. That's 24 of the 31 sports had a team GPA GPA of 3.0. Women's golf team, by the way, recorded the highest team GPA among the 31 sports. The Indy Lions have now achieved the six highest semesters all time for the number of students with at least a 3.0 grade point average in the past six semesters, including a spring record of 495 student-athletes, 3.0 or better in the spring. So, again, 3.14 overall GPA, previous record 3.12. Percentage of student athletes with at least a 3.0, 66%. Previous high have been 63%. 24 teams that learn earning at least a 3.0 GPA. And that happened, by the way, during the fall, too. 
fall 2016. 495 student athletes will lead us to 3.0 GPA. It's the fifth straight year that Penn State's broken its record. 237 student athletes named to the Dean's List. 3.5 GPA or better. That's the fifth consecutive year they've upped that number. I mean, that's that's just remarkable what they've been able to do. They put in the Morgan Academic Center. It's amazing that what facilities can mean to what you're doing. And the facility, for example, I'll give you Morgan. Like you go in there, it's conducive to what you need to do. You need computers. You need quiet areas. You need you need to have maybe group meeting areas. You can do all that. Plus, obviously, they've got the academic people in there to help. Having a facility like that does make a big difference. Now, the last time I was in there, I've been in there a couple of times. Last time I was in there, there's so many athletes in there. The last time I was in there it was during the fall. Was the last time I actually physically was inside Morgan, and the number of athletes in there trying to get things done. I mean, from in, from every sport, from every sport, and it makes a big difference. And plus, you know, let's face it, the work ethic, the fact it's emphasized across the board, makes a big difference. So congratulations to them. We're all making important steps in their lives. And it was interesting, we had Tim Frazier on the show yesterday, and here's Tim sitting there. He's in the NBA. He's been able to make some pretty good coin doing it. Uh, He's had to move around a bit to do it, but he's in there, and he's hanging in there, and he's a part of the league. Okay. But always remember, Tim Frazier also has his degree in supply chain. He already has it. How about Venus Williams winning her way to the Wimbledon final? Amazing. She's going after, I think, her sixth, I believe. That's amazing. And uh, Garbine uh, Magaruza, who's a 14 seed, so it's a 14 against a 10, will go head to head. Did you watch any of the ESPYs last night? I did a little bit. I I kind of I kind of kicked I myself. Ask, I figured. Can, can I can I ask one quick question? Sure. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I remember you asked me that last year. I, I actually I remember I if I remember I think I watched the entire ESPYs last year. Last night. If I would have only picked a portion, it should have been the beginning because uh, I wanted to catch Peyton's monologue. I missed that part. I, I watched maybe uh, close to an hour of it. wasn't too bad. What part did you watch last night? Uh, about two thirds toward the end. I did want to see uh, the uh, the Eunice, uh, Eunice Shriver's, you know, his you know, her, her tribute. Her, yeah, the tribute, the, the um, Arthur Ashe Award with uh, our former first lady uh, awarding that to uh, uh, Eunice and her son uh, Maria's uh, brother up uh, on the stage mm-hmm. uh, to accept the award, which was tremendous. With other uh, special Olympic athletes up there, that was a wonderful touch they uh, they added to that too. So, yeah. But, yeah, I would have liked to have caught the in its entirety Peyton's monologue at the beginning. I heard it was really, really funny. He was taking some pot shots at Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, which was kind of funny. <laughs> How dare he do that on ESPN? I don't know. <laughs> a nice little diversion on a midsummer night. It was either that or catch up on four episodes of Brockmire, which I haven't had a chance to watch yet. I have to get those finished. Hey, the Brockmire. <laughs> Brockmire. <laughs> and Kazari is terrific in that role. Loved how he came up with that. I know I've told this before about meeting him. Yeah. Uh, at Super Bowl Media Day. Oh, that's right. Out, out at a MetLife Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, no, actually, we're in the Prudential Center. Oh, the media, that's the, right. That's right. The Media, media Center. Media yeah. is, well, no, they made the Prudential Center where the uh, Devils play. 
Oh, next because, door. Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, it was nine degrees that day. Yeah. It was nine. Right? And I remember we're standing outside waiting to get in. I'm like, this is at nine degrees. I'm like, holy mackerel. And I mean, we're outside for about an hour waiting to get in. So we get in there. It couldn't have gone any better. I mean, we played back most of the stuff that I was able to get on the show the next day. I mean, it couldn't have gone any better. But it's nearing the end. And with about, I don't know, seven or eight minutes to go in the one-hour session for the Seahawks, Marshawn Lynch came out. Now, everybody else had been out. He had not come out. Everybody else been out. Like, the second you get your hour, all the Seahawks were out there. So Jordan Hill was playing with them at the time. Jordan's now with the Detroit Lions. But Jordan Hill, so I, you know, I, go, I went over and got Jordan Hill. Then we got what we needed to with Russell Wilson and Peyton Manning and Richard Sherman. I mean, Manning was in the Broncos group. With uh, Russell Wilson, uh, Pete Carroll, and, and and Sherman, Richard Sherman. All right, and they were the primary ones. And then you start going to the individual ones where you get a couple here, a couple there. And then I finally got to Michael Robinson. And so I'm done with everything I want to get with Mike, and now the other people are dispersed, and Marshawn Lynch comes out. Well, naturally, I mean, what does the pack do? The pack always does what I always expect the pack to do, and that is, like lemmings, running toward the same story all the time. Because I'm sure they got some producers saying, well, if Marshawn Lynch comes out, you better get some shots of him coming out. Even though he's saying literally nothing. And he stood there and said nothing. And so I'm just chatting with Mike, and we're looking at Lynch is probably, I don't know, from where we're standing, 25 feet away, right? Because Mike was like the third booth in, and Lynch was in the runway. And so we're just chit-chatting, and all of a sudden this um, guy it's maybe about... Mm, I'm going to say at least two or three inches shorter than I am walks up. He says, hey, you mind if I ask some questions? I'm thinking, man, it sounds familiar. I'm looking at the guy, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's Hank Azaria. All right, so Hank Azaria starts asking Michael Robinson some questions. And by the way, they're all funny. Every one of them's funny. I mean, I'm laughing. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my goodness, it's Mo from Bo's Tavern. (laughs) 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 Yeah, that's all right. (laughs) Every once in a while. Every once in a while. Yes, the Eunice Kennedy Shriver, Arthur Ashe, uh, which, of course, her family had to accept. Uh, Look, that's what the award's about. Somebody that does something like that. That's what that award's about. And uh, obviously I've been involved in Special Olympics now for oh my goodness. I guess maybe almost 30 years. Almost 30 years I've been involved in it. And It's rewarding beyond words. Rewarding beyond words. I'm not so sure who gets more out of it, the athletes or the people who volunteer to Well, you can't start summer in central PA, specifically Penn State, until Special Olympics happens on campus. There's just so many that look forward to that every year. It's, it's, It's really an amazing event. It's amazing. I love those people. They come in there, uh, you, you love their parents, you love their siblings, you love them, and they give back 100 times. So. All right. But last night was great, too, uh, catching uh, Brian Cranston on, uh, on stage giving the Icon Award to Vin Scully just to hear Vin Scully talk. Uh, you know, it just, it's, it just seems like, even though it was last October, when he called his last game, it just feels like it's been longer than that. It's great to hear him on, just hear him live again. I guess he gave a very short but poignant speech last night, from what I understand. 
uh, which is typical of him. I think I read, I did read his speech this morning, and in and I read it. And I thought he just is a, a poet laureate with a depth of intelligence to him that he. And what's amazing is that well, he's 88 now. How he has never lost his fastball. Never. Listen to the speech he gave last night. I mean, I'll read. I'll read it to you because obviously, okay. Uh, on October 2nd, 1936, a redhead, eight-and-a-half-year-old walking by a window saw the score of Game 2 of the 1936 World Series. It involved the Giants and the Yankees. That little kid fell in love that day with baseball. The last game he did before retiring was October 2nd, 2016, exactly 80 years from whence the love affair began. And in 65 years, he was honored and thrilled and humbled to be able to fulfill a boyhood dream of broadcasting Major League Baseball. You know, God gave us moments so we could have ro- so we could have roses in December. And in the December of my years, I've collected so many roses and cherished each and every one of them. And you give me a rose tonight to join my collection of all those years. I am humbled, I am honored, and I know another thing. My work was never ever a burden. I consider it always a blessing. Thank you very much. That's the whole speech. God gave us memories so we could have roses in December. And in the December of my years, I have collected so many roses and cherished each and every one of them. Back with more in a moment on News Radio 1070 WKOK. City blocks of new Ford trucks. Over 40,000 trucks sold. SMC is where you want to be. Sunbury Motors Ford has over 110 new Ford trucks. And during July, they'll include a complimentary accessory package. With the purchase of any new F-150 through July 31st, receive a tonneau cover, molded splash guards, and window deflectors at no additional charge. SMC is where you want to be because they have the largest selection of new Ford trucks in all of central Pennsylvania. And that means the biggest savings. Take up to $13,500 off on new F-150s. And SMC has them starting as low as $23,919. Save up to seven grand on 2017 Ford Escapes. And they're slashed as low as $19,380. Explorers, Edges, and Expeditions have discounts up to eleven grand. SMC is where you want to be in July for this mega summer spectacular sale and the complimentary F-150 accessory package. Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury. F-150 accessory package valued at six ninety nine. dollars Excludes prior sales and ordered units. Great to have you with us on the show today. Head to the bottom of the hour. We'll have news for you. Thanks to Tim Frazier for being on the show yesterday. We're going to have Paul Alexander coming up on the show tomorrow. Looking forward to that. We're rescheduling through the publicist Tony Knopp to be on the show. Looks like we're going to get John Bacon on Tuesday uh, next week. And we might have some others that we are working on for next week as well. And we have been exchanging messages with a former Penn Stater and uh, one-time Super Bowl champion for the Denver Broncos, Jordan Norwood. We hope to have Jordan on next week. Oh, good. Right before camp gets rolling. Yeah. there's a uh, great story about the former Penn State player who is uh, now doing a lot of important work for the uh, National Football League. I'm going to tell you about that in the next half hour. Uh, became an attorney and now is doing some great work and important work between the NFL and Congress. We'll tell you about that in the next half hour. Today's show brought to you by our good friends at Sunbury Motors, Force Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors, Key Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf on News Radio 1070 WKOK. 
taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motors Studio, here's Steve Jones. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. All right, great to have you with us on the show today. Uh, the Mike and Mike, uh, I'm sorry, the Mike and the Mad Dog documentary is coming up tonight. Talk about that in a moment. Uh, it's interesting in one way, and it's so regional in another that. Uh, Well, it'll be interesting to see you know, what they do with it uh, this evening. Time now for this day in sports history. And on this uh, July the 13th, Ed Delahanty became the second major league player to hit four home runs in a single game in 1896. In 1930, the first World Cup soccer competition began in Uruguay. Thirteen teams were in competition. 1972, one of the more different trades in the history of sports. Carol Rosenblum, then the owner of the Baltimore Colts, traded teams with Robert Ursay, then the owner of the Los Angeles Rams. Ursay then took the Colts, 11 years later moved them to Indianapolis, Rosenblum eventually passed away, and his wife, Georgia Frontieri, became the owner, and eventually they moved to St. Louis. Now they're back in Los Angeles. 1973, David Bedford set a new world record in the 10,000-meter race in London, time 27 minutes, 31 seconds. 1982, the first ever All-Star game to be played outside the United States. They played at the Big O in Montreal on this date, 1982. 1984, sportscaster Howard Cosell asked to be released from his duties on Monday Night Football. He said that he was tired of being tied to the football mentality. Okay. It's this day in sports history. So... Great to have you with us on the uh, show today. And it is very quiet right now. Very quiet right now. Live for Life is coming up on Saturday, 11 to 1. Talk a little bit more about that coming up tomorrow. And we talked about the academic success. Now, tonight, taking advantage of a slow night will be a 30 for 30 on Mike and the Mad Dog on WFAN. Now, there will be some people in our area that have actually, over time, heard the show. And that's, of course you have. I know I had because I would travel back and forth to Connecticut when my parents were alive and see them. And... That was that was the gist of it. That's when I'd do it. And the and so that's when I heard them. I told the story yesterday about Mary Tyler Moore. One of the stories after she had passed away was that people didn't realize she was a big fan of WFAM. Why? Because her husband would put on Mike and the Mad Dog in the afternoons. They drove from Manhattan to their home in Connecticut. So I listen to you guys all the time. So that was uh, part of what they did. And they certainly did an incredible job 
of ingraining uh, the show into the minds of New Yorkers. But as I pointed out yesterday in the show, I think it's going to be interesting uh, even for people who have not watched to just see the two personalities. Uh, but if you live south of Baltimore... You never heard the show unless you traveled to New York. And even then, if you traveled to New York, you probably didn't hear it. And if you live west of Scranton, you probably didn't hear it either. And you can talk about, well, yes, carried it. Yes, a regional network. It's the same thing. There's no difference. I mean, you're not sitting there in Ohio with Yes Network. You're not sitting in Alabama with Yes Network. I mean, you're not sitting there with any of that stuff. And that's, you know, now it doesn't mean every 30 for 30 has to be a national story. Because they've done other interesting 30 for 30s that may have been regional in like like Ben Wilson for example regional in scope but but that is the uh, that's what's coming up tonight I mean, it's, uh, I, mean you're, I know you're going to watch it yep DVR set up ready to go I probably will I probably won't even I'll probably watch it live as it goes probably won't watch it on the DVR what time what time is it on tonight? it is on at 8 and it's only one hour, just eight to nine. Yeah, but see, I think that's the smart part. I was surprised. I thought it would go to like ninety minutes because I know no. the the XFL one that they had on several months back. I remember that was ninety minutes. I always thought they just went one hour or two hours. Uh, I think going uh, one hour is good because again, this is this is a regional story that they're turning into a national thirty for thirty. There are going to be a lot of people that are going to, that tonight will watch, and it'll be the first time they really know anything about them. It's true, and it depends on the content uh, as well. Like with the, uh, you know, like with Liverpool in the '96, uh, the one they did three years ago. That was a two-hour one, I believe. Yeah. And then the one on, uh, and there was one that was focused on. I think it was two hours as well. It was the one where the uh, soccer player down in South... I'm trying to think of the country in South America. Maybe in Colombia. Colombia. In Colombia. Was in Colombia yeah. who, scored the, who scored the own goal against the United States. Yeah, I believe that was in the 94 World Cup. And then he got yeah. so much He got so much backlash from his own people uh, that uh, can you, decided to go out without... And there were some, some people in his family saying, yeah, no, you better not go out. And he went bar hopping one night and was found dead the next morning. Yes. I believe that one was a two-hour one as well. They were going through not just his story, but they were focusing on the, the that country's love of soccer, taking yeah, its mind he, but, off uh, you know, Pablo Escobar. But again, it's national in some ways because the own goal was against the U.S. I think I think that in that World Cup's the only one we had, right? That was one in L.A., right? Yeah, I think the game was in yeah. L.A., I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was in the Rose Bowl. 30 for 30, the two Escobars. That was in 2010. Yeah. So. Um, so that's. Uh, yeah, it was Andreas Escobar that was the one that was killed from Colombia. Yeah. 1994. Yeah. So. Um, that is tonight. At 8 o'clock. And I think it's smart that it's an hour. I think, you know, after a certain time, I mean, there's certain things I think they can handle being two hours, I think. But these are two interesting personalities. Um, They both thought they were going to get the show, you know. They were in the running for that show as solo acts. And the uh, and 
they said, no. Nah. In the end, they said, well, you're, I said, I think they told Francesa, I've got good news and bad news. He goes, what's the good news is? He said, the good news is you're doing, I, I want to say the show, wasn't the show, what, two to six originally? Now it's like one to six. He says, you're going to do two to six. Great. He said, well, what's the rest of it? He said, well, Russo's going to do it with you. Well, they weren't crazy about that. Neither one of them was. They each thought that they were going to get the spot solo themselves. And it turned out that that they were paired up. And it did not go well initially for them. And in not going well initially for them, They finally, there was an ice breaking moment, and it had to do with some skit that Mike did, Francesa did, that made fun of Chris about something. But Chris was in on it the entire time. So it wasn't, you know, he didn't just do this out of spite to be mean or anything like that. They planned out to do this. And Russo was like, yeah, I'm game, I'll do this, you know, it's fine. And it turned out it sounded so good on the air when they did it, and I can't remember what it was about, though, that it kind of broke the ice for them and really broke the log jam for the listeners, too. And they did this for 19 years. They were the first ones to go down. Now, you have to get lucky when you do something like this. Let's not pretend you're some sort of pioneer when you take the show down to the Super Bowl. There's no radio row at the Super Bowl. Okay? None. And um, so they take the show down there, and so they've got everybody to themselves. Now, I want to... This is not groundbreaking, and I'll tell you why it's not groundbreaking. I mean, let's not, let's not pretend this is groundbreaking. I mean... I'm just a little old guy in State College, Pennsylvania. But in 1985, I did all of my sports talk shows from the Fountain Blue Hotel leading up to Penn State, Oklahoma. So it's not groundbreaking to take your talk show on the road in 1990. It may have been to the Super Bowl, but the Giants were in that Super Bowl playing Buffalo. And they did the show at the Hyatt Regency, in Tampa. Penn State fans will be familiar with that because when Penn State has played in the Outback Bowl, that's been the hotel that we've stayed in. And (laughs) they had a band scheduled to play that night and there's a couple thousand giant fans cramming into like that. And they all want to hear the show, so they paid the band not to play. It was like, we don't want to hear the band, we want to hear about the Giants. And in the end, you have to understand, what is their show in New York about? Their show in New York is justifiably about the Giants, the Jets, the Yankees, the Mets, the Knicks with a little bit of the Nets, a little bit, tiny bit of the Islanders, tiny Devils, and and of course more about the Rangers. But they're about the Giants, the Jets, the Yankees, the Mets, the Knicks, then maybe a little bit about the Rangers. That's what they're about. They're not going to sit there and, and debate the college football playoff. They're not going to talk about where everybody stands with that. They're not going to talk about, you know, too many. You know, they'll get into some with the NCAA tournament or if the Big East tournament's going on there, whatever. They'll do some of that. But they're about who they are regionally, just like we talk heavy on Penn State. Heavy on Bucknell. We've got Joe Susan on every single week. And Coach Day is on every single week. 
in football and basketball season. So, I mean, we, we concentrate on the Steelers, the Eagles, Penn State, Bucknell, you know, a little bit on the Penguins, a little bit on the Sixers, Eagles, Steelers, Phillies, Pirates. I mean, we concentrate a lot on those teams based on the guests we have and so forth. We'll go national once in a while and get a, you know some, some guests on like a Tim Kirchin or Peter King or something like that. Uh, because I always felt, I've always felt in this show that you cannot always think small. You've got to think big. Let's give the fans of our area somebody that, you know, because every area to me is important. And getting big name guests to me has always been really, really important because don't you deserve to hear big name guests? I mean, you're the listeners. I mean, you deserve to have a big name guest on just like Boston does. So we try to do that along with regional guests. And that's what they do. Except they concentrate on the Jets, the Giants, the Knicks, <laughs> the Yankees, the Mets, and some of the Rangers. That's what they concentrate on. That's the show. And it should be the show because guess what? They're a New York radio station. <laughs> that's what they are. They're not a national outlet. All right, we'll come back with more in a moment here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Yeah, like you all probably watched tonight. Not a lot else going on. Suit gave me a list of Hallmark movies tonight. I was like, oh, okay. Christmas in July movies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkable. It gives you that ho, ho, ho feeling. There's been two or three channels that my wife always stays locked in on. She hasn't had Hallmark Channel on in a while, and lo and behold, there they were, the Golden Girls. But it wasn't a Christmas episode. So I mean, oh, they must be, those Christmas in July movies will be starting pretty soon. The Golden Girls. Yeah. Now, let's see. Let's just look it up here. What 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 do we have here? Uh, Hallmark Channel, right? There you go. Oh, we got. Let's see here. Home for Christmas Day premieres Sunday, July 16th. There you go. There you go. Let's see. And the schedule for tonight. I'm sure they've got something interesting. Oh, it is Gold Crown Christmas Week in July. Uh, let's see. Let's say 13th. Uh, let's see. Heart to Heart's on a lot. Monk, monk, monk. There you go. Monk. Uh, uh, they, must monk. Just, they must started just airing monk. Monk at three, monk at four, monk at five, monk at six. <laughs> right. I know then, US, USA Network used to have monk on quite a bit. Angels and ornaments at seven. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Corinne, a hopeless romantic. Has no idea what she's getting herself into when she wishes on a Christmas tree ornament for a great romance. Her wish materializes into a choice between three suitors. <laughs> let me get let me guess the role portrayed by Candace Cameron Bure. She's literally on every movie on that channel. Uh, Jessalyn Gilsig is the name. Okay, there. take your word for it. All right, yeah, let's see. And then the next movie is Love Always Santa. At 9 o'clock. So after the mic and the Mad Dog thing's <laughs> over with. Go straight after, to Hallmark Channel. <laughs> after losing her husband, Bradley, three years ago on Christmas Day. So that's hard. Celia Banks never thought she'd fall in love again. Now her entire world revolves around taking care of her daughter, Lily. Lily writes a letter to Santa with one wish for her mom to be happy and find love again. There you go. You want to know what's coming up tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It's tomorrow the 14th. Tomorrow's Bastille Day, by the way. Oh, perfect. Tomorrow night's movie is Storming the Bastille. No. <laughs> Starring Candace Cameron Bure. All right. <laughs> and Lori Lachlan. <laughs> 
We're your home for news, sports, weather, and your home for the Phillies. News Radio 1070 WKOK Sunbury.